Everyone, Disturb43216 here, continuing on with the In Flames discography. Today we are going to be talking about my personal favorite In Flames albums, the 1999 masterpiece that is known as Colony. So let's just get into this, because there's just so much to talk about on this album. This is one of my favorite albums of all time, and I just can't wait to talk about all the amazing stuff that In Flames is doing on this album. There's just so many great tracks on this album. I don't have a single particular track that I don't like on this album. It's just every single one is perfect. And this album is one of the best melodic death metal albums that is out there. So uh, let's jump right into some of the tracks that I think are my favorite ones. Which is really hard to pick out a few tracks that I really like on this album because all of them are just amazing in my opinion. So let's start off with the opener, Embody the Invisible, which has some of the best melodic like lead riffing I've ever heard. Just this really big, catchy, melodic riff that hooks you right into the song right from the get-go. And there's just great lyrics in this song. There's some interesting lyrical content in here. It's pretty abstract, but it's uh, pretty interesting stuff going on in here. And there's fantastic drumming on this song. And there's a pretty good solo in the middle of the song, right, but right after the first chorus. And I, I just really like this track. It's one of my favorite In Flames tracks out there. The next track I want to talk about is the second track, Ordinary Story, which has fantastic lyrics about, I don't know, being forced by society to conform to society instead of being what you want to be and sort of getting lost in the shuffle and that kind of stuff. It's kind of different stuff that we haven't really seen from In Flames before, because on the previous albums they've been a bit more abstract with their lyrics, but this song is a little more personal and I really like the way that it came out. Plus, there's some, some huge, big, groovy guitar riffs in here that I really like to listen to. The next song I'll talk about is my favorite song on the album, which is the fourth track, which is the title track called Colony. This is the song that really, when I first purchased this album back a few years ago, I started listening to it, and as soon as I came to this track, I knew that this was going to be my favorite track on the album. It just has some really cool, big groovy guitar riffs and then it comes in sort of later with the more melodic sh stuff to hook you in but in the chorus there's like it's sort of clean guitar as opposed to more distorted sound and then it cuts back into the distortion for the pre-chorus and then more melodic in the chorus but I just really like the way the song progresses throughout the song and plus there's just some fantastic lyrics so lyric look little content on this song is sort of is a nod back to Horacle, which was sort of talking about, which, as I mentioned in the Horacle review last week, is that that album was a concept album that sort of looked at how the advancement of technology would lead the human race to destroy themselves and then broadcast a sort of post-apocalyptic, I mean, it would broadcast a apocalyptic event on the television for all the world to see, and then sort of dealing with what would happen after that. Sort of the, the intro on that song, Jotun talks about like a, sort of a premonition of what's to come on that. And this song sort of builds off what Jotun was talking about, how there was this like the world will destroy itself and then these and then and the actual lyrics of the song are there'll be colonies, mushrooms scattered for out, forever out of context, rising spores from a dying world. Which I sort of think, this is what this song is sort of talking about, building off of that. I think actually the name of the album comes from that lyric from Horacle. But this song sort of picks up from there. It talks about how human technology is advanced to a certain point where like, there's just genetically engineered super soldiers and all this crazy stuff happening. But sort of humans have lost their way. Sort of. The main lyric in the song is when we can no longer cry and reality is torn and it's easy to forget the responsibility relies on us all, which I sort of think is looking at how humans will right to the point where it's too late and they've realized too late that they've destroyed the world. So I sort of think that's a really cool song. I love the way this song came out. It's one of my favorite In Flame songs of all time. Probably is my favorite In Flame song of all time. Next song I'll talk about is the fifth track, Zombie Inc., which I really love because it has an amazing melodic riff that I just cannot stop listening to whenever I play this song. I just love the sound of it. And then it has this really cool interlude in the middle where it goes to clean guitar right before the solo. 
And I really like the way that it shifts like that. It starts off sort of all heavy and stuff, and then it gets soft in the middle, and then it gets heavy again at the end with a nice, really, one of the better solos on this album, which has some of the best guitar work from In Flames that I've seen to date. Plus, I really like the way the lyrics are on the song. A lot of stuff is sort of weird in the chorus. I don't really understand what I'm talking about. What I really like is the chorus, which sort of looks at how humans are sort of superficial. I mean, the lyric is, Shallowness and beauty was all that concerned her body, but her soul, her divine guest, was thrust to the bottom. I sort of took a look at that as how humans are all caught up in how someone looks and if they're beautiful or not, but they sort of don't really care if the person's a terrible person on the inside, which I sort of think that lyric's giving a nice insight into that. At least that's what I think they're trying to talk about in this song. I could be completely wrong since, again, some of the wording's a little off since still Anders is still not as fluent in English as he could be. So, I mean, there's some translation errors, but this is the last album where they, he actually had to have the guy from Dark Tranquility, the guitarist from Dark Tranquility, help him translate. Because on future albums, he's able to write in English by himself, which I think was an interesting thing, how he's dedicated himself to sort of get better at English with each album that progresses on. Anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent. Next song I want to talk about is Towers Coexistence. It has some fantastic guitar work. There's great parts where the guitars are harmonized together and doing this really cool thing. And the bass is kind of going off differently from the guitar. Because on all the previous albums, the bass sort of followed along. But this time, the bass is sort of doing its own thing a lot on different songs. Like on the previous track I talked about, Zombie Inc. and on this track. Plus, the solo on this song is incredible. It's one of the best solos from In Flames. Okay, a couple more songs I want to talk about is they re-recorded the first track from Lunar Strain called Behind Space. This time it's called Behind Space 99 to sort of differentiate it because this is the version re-recorded for 1999. And what I like about this version is that, again, the production's better, but I think this version's also arranged a little bit differently. It sounds a little better, like the part right before the solo is a little different and it sort of, I don't know, it feels like a more cohesive version of the song, if that makes any sense. Plus, I like the solo, it sounds a little bit different and it seems to be more executed better. I'm not really sure how to describe that, but I really like the way that they re-recorded this song. One difference though I did notice, a major difference is on the original version there was this cool folk folky sounding and 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 outro up to the song which they got rid of for this song but they added some cool like sci-fi sound effects to the song which was kind of interesting the last song i want to talk about is the is the uh the second to last track well it's the last track on the original release but there's a really cool instrumental i'm going to talk about too after that but anyway the New Word. I really like this song. It's got some cool lyrics and stuff, but what I really like about the song is the really long solo in the middle. It's one of the best In Flames solos, as I've said many times, but it's probably the best one on this album. It goes on for a while. It has a lot of different progression. It has a sort of slower part, and then it goes a little faster in the middle. It does some really interesting stuff here. Okay, the last song I want to talk about is not on the original, original release, but I said I wasn't going to talk about bonus tracks, but this song needs to be talked about. It's on all the reissues, but the last song on the reissue is called Man Made God, which is a four-minute instrumental, and it is incredible. It has some really cool, big, heavy chugging riffs, and then some cool melodic stuff happening, and then a cool acoustic part in the middle, and then it gets heavy, and then there's... It's just... The song progresses in a really cool way, and it's definitely worth listening. It's one of my favorite instrumental tracks out there. So that's it for the tracks I want to talk about. I pretty much talked about most of the songs in the album because I just love this album so much. And there's just so many cool songs on this album to talk about. But let's now talk about the people who went into creating this album. So, of course, Anders on vocals and writing the lyrics. His lyrics are a lot better this time around. They've been constantly improving. Plus, his vocals are incredible on this album. It's his best vocal performance that I've heard from him. It's just really intense guttural sound, but it's... It sounds unique from any other vocalist I've heard. 
Plus, he does some cool, like, sort of clean singing parts on a couple songs, like on Ordinary Story and on Co Coexistence, which sort of changes it up a little bit. But he's really spot on with his screams and growls on this album. And it, it, like I said before, it's his best vocal performance. Okay, let's talk about Bjorn and Jesper on guitars. Now, Bjorn used to be on drums, and he did help out with the gar guitars for a bit, but he has switched over to guitar for this one because... I forgot to mention this before, but Glenn, uh, the guitarist, and Johan, the bassist, both left the band. And then Bjorn switched over to guitars. And then they added Peter on bass and Daniel on drums. And they this is what I consider the quintessential In Flames lineup. This is the best In Flames lineup. And this is the one they had for the majority of their career before Jesper left a few years ago. Anyway, let's get into talking about Jesper and Bjorn and guitar. There's some phenomenal guitar work on this album. It's just great rhythm guitar sound. The production of the guitars is fantastic. There's some great chugging riffs and some cool, like, I don't know, groovy sounding riffs. But I really like the way it turned out on there. So then on the lead guitar, there's some fantastic lead playing. There's amazing solos and there's a lot of cool harmonizations with both lead guitars at the same time, which they did it a bit on previous albums, but they really emphasize it on this album. Like on Body of the Invisible, they do it. In Zombie Ink, they do it. Coerced Coexistence has some fantastic harmonizations. It's just a really cool thing they did on this album. It sort of defines the in flame sound. Peter on bass is a lot better than Johan was. Johan was alright, but Peter does a lot more things where he differentiates himself from the guitars and doesn't just follow along. He does some cool things to sort of add to the overall piece of music that's being created. Like on Zombie Inc. and Chorus Coexistence, there's some really nice bass lines that separate from the guitars and go out and do their own thing. Plus the bass is turned up nice and loud on this album and it's easy to hear, which I like always like to hear because I always like to hear those nice big bass sounds to sort of fill out the music and make it sound bigger. And then we have Daniel on drums. There's some phenomenal drumming on this one. There's a, the songs are a lot more fast paced than previous things and Daniel does a really good job of keeping up with that and he's got some great double bass and some really cool fills in between to transition from different parts of the song. And he does also some pretty good stuff when the songs slow down and does the, the clean guitar parts or the more the acoustic guitar parts where it's a little bit slower he can slow down a bit and He's really good at shifting between going fast and going slow, and it works out really well in this album. It's just some phenomenal drumming. It's some of the best drumming from In Flames that I've heard. So that pretty much wraps up a review. Now I'm going to have to give this album a 10 out of 10. It is one of my favorite albums of all time. It is the definition of In Flames. It is their masterpiece. It is a perfect album in my opinion, and you cannot get better than this if you're looking for a good melodic death metal album. So do me a favor and check this album out because it is an absolutely amazing album. That's it for the review, and I will see you guys next time when I review Clayman.